Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new video tutorial of an art journal process using some tape. I use some washi tape, some masking tape, and drywall tape. And I want to show you how to create texture using tape in an art journal. Because once you see how to use it in an art journal, then you can use it on any type of project to create that beautiful texture that you can have with mixed media. I've listed all the products below in the description area, including the links to drywall tape, to the washi tape, and to regular masking tape. I'm working inside my 6x6 disc bound joggles art journal, which is composed with really thick watercolor paper that is perfect for mixed media. And I'm using some washi tape from my Prima Planner. These are amazing planner tapes that you can also use for any type of project. I think they're from the Traveler's Collection and there's two sets of washi tapes here. There's two different tubs and I use washi tapes from both of them. And it's really fun to use the washi tape because you can rip it and create texture or you can use it whole depending on the size. So the thicker ones I tend to rip and create texture with them while the other ones are more there for the image like these numbers that I'm applying as well to the background. And you can just add them randomly. There's really no science to this. You can just add any type of washi tape. It doesn't have to be these ones. You can use old washi tapes. Any tape that has an, some kind of embellishment or some kind of beautiful images or elements. I really like the, these specific ones because they're very vintage and they have beautiful butterflies and some written images. So I'm excited to use them and create the texture that way. One of the main reasons why I like working with tape is because it doesn't have to have any glue in order to stick it on. So you could create an amazing texture by just sticking it on to the background and then you can definitely seal it later with some glue. But you don't have to make a lot of effort in order to apply it. So you can recycle tape. So you can use things like washi tape or you can use things like masking tape or any type of tape and all you do is you just glue it to the background and it has that stickiness behind so you don't have to do much it just creates that easy texture for you without having to put much effort another option if you don't have washi tape is to use things like painters tape or masking tape or even electrical tape or duct tape, basically any type of tape works because it's really easy to create beautiful texture with it. You can rip them like you see me doing this with the masking tape and create like that ripped texture. But mostly it's just recycling things and doing things that are easy to use and that are cheap. Another easy way to create texture for our journaling backgrounds or for any type of background is to use drywall tape. And drywall tape comes into two different type of textures. You have with the netting texture, which is the one you see me applying here. And all I did is cut it with some scissors. It has some sticky background, so it's really easy, really easy to apply and just stick onto the background. And you can just cut it in any type of shape or any type of size and just apply it to the background. And although it's see-through, when you add the mediums and the paints, you will see the beautiful texture come out. The other type of drywall tape is this one that looks like a punchinella. And this one I think is available only in the US, in the Home Depots in the US or on Amazon, while the other one is a more a Canadian one, or maybe it's available also in the US. So the nice thing about this one is that it also has a tape behind it. It's sticky on the background, but in this case you remove the backing and you use the taped area. You can also keep the other side, which is the one that doesn't have the stickiness, and you can use it as background for any type of project. So you could use it also as textures. The brown part that I'm peeling off can also be used to create texture, but in this case I'm only using the tape because of the same reason I mentioned before, because it has that stickiness, so it's really easy to just glue on and not have to add anything else. 
I realized that I was working inside the journal and the reason why I like this journal the most is because you can actually remove the pages and work with them without having to work inside the journal. So all I did is remove them from the 6x6 journal so I can work with them separately. In order to seal all the tape and make sure that it doesn't come apart, I took some Finabear soft matte gel from Prima and just using my silicone brush added a thin layer to the background to just seal all the tapes and make sure they don't peel off. Sometimes washi tape tends to peel off when you're adding other mediums because it has very little tape behind it. That way you can easily remove it when you're using it in your planner. But when I'm using it for mixed media, I want to make sure it stays put in the background and it just belongs to the background and the texture of the layout. I heat set the gel really well and then I took one of the joggle stencils and some Prima Marketing Finabear modeling paste and I wanted to create some more texture in the background. So I used this stencil to create these bubbly lines going across in the same direction as the tape. All I did is just use my silicone brush to just add some texture and I didn't add it everywhere. I just added it in some areas where the tape was and used the stencil in different lengths to make sure that it wasn't even. I did this to both backgrounds on either side and then let it heat set with my heat tool. The next step, and this is an important step, is to add a little bit of a thin layer of gesso to the background. You could add clear gesso if you want to leave all the background the way it is and not have it covered up or like I'm doing here I'm using a very thin layer of white gesso which I've watered down with some water. This is easy to do as you take a little bit of the white gesso and you just spray some water in it and mix it. That way you get a really thin layer. It still protects the background before adding the sprays but at the same time it doesn't cover the whole background it doesn't cover the images that you have in there and you can always add more gesso in those places that you want to cover so some places I added more gesso and in some places I added less gesso depending on how much coverage I wanted but it becomes a really good primer to when you add the sprays all you have to make sure is that once you add it you dry it really really well before you add the sprays once everything was dry really well, it was time to add the sprays. I recently bought Marabou acrylic sprays, and let me just tell you, I'm in love with them. They were on sale at joggles.com, and I just went ahead and bought myself a bunch of colors. I bought some of my favorite colors. One of them is, of course, this turquoise-looking color. And I will list all the colors below. I can't remember the names of all of them, but I will just list them all below. And then you can purchase the ones you want or the colors that you want. They are highly pigmented. They're acrylic based. And once you heat set them, they're permanent. So they don't reactivate with water the way other sprays do. So all I started doing is adding them with a small paintbrush onto the edge of my art journal and then spraying water and letting it drip down between the different textures that I added with the tape. Once I finished adding the turquoise I went in with a second color which is a darker blue almost like a royal blue I think it's called gentian this one I do remember the name and when they were mixing together it created a beautiful color and now you can really see the tapes and the textures especially the ones from the drywall. So you can see how it's going in between the netted tape and the one with the punchinella and it makes a beautiful beautiful texture. It's also going around the texture from the stencil and it creates that beautiful pattern as well. I did this exact same thing on the other side. I just went ahead and added some of the turquoise color first and then I sprayed with water. I did it the same way first with the turquoise and then added the darker blue and it's really really beautiful to see how they interact with each other. Although I love how it looks right now I wanted to introduce a darker color. This is a darker green or teal 
and it's also really beautiful. It's in the same shade of colors and it looks amazing together with this one. So what I did is I added some of this so it could drip in between the textures and really add some darker shades to the background. I did this of course on both sides and as you can see that the edges are darker but you can still see some of the designs from the washi tape which is what I wanted to accomplish. I only added a little bit of this darker shade and then I went ahead and did the same thing on the other side. So whatever I did to one side of the page I also did to the other. You don't have to work on a double journal page. You can only work, you can go ahead and just use one side and do this on one side or on a canvas or on whatever you want these sprays work on any type of surface. I wanted to add a little bit of that lime green color. Again, I don't remember the name, but I will definitely add it to the list underneath. And I just splattered a little bit. And since the background was still a little bit wet, they kind of spread and created really nice highlights in between the textures. So first I just went ahead and did some splatters. But then I went with my paintbrush and just added a little bit of that greenish, yellowish tint onto the background. I did have to heat set the darker colors first because the lime green was kind of mixing with the darker colors and I wanted it to stand on its own. So by heat setting the background, I made sure that the ink in the background is permanent and that way I can add some splashes of the lime green color and have it stain the background without mixing with the other colors. The next color I added was black and in retrospect I wish I would have not added this black because I really loved the way it was looking with the blue and the greens but once I added it I realized that it was too dark so I had to go with it and although it made it look beautiful and it really brought out those colors I really felt that I could have done without it. It did look really nice with the black, but I think looking back, I would have probably liked it without it as well. I did end up adding a little bit of black only and wiping it off the edges and just adding at the top and letting it drip down. And I tried not to add too much because once I realized it was too dark, I didn't want to add too, too much on it. So, and you can always add water and dilute things more in order for it to become less dark. I did the same thing, of course, on the other side and, let, and then dried it up. I heat set this really well so I could then add some gold to it. Probably I would have not added the gold had I not added the black, but I wanted a lighter color so I could kind of lighten and highlight the black a little bit more. Since I had already added that black and because it changed the look of the background, I felt like I needed something a bit more shiny to add to the background. Now this gold is really interesting, this gold spray because it has an element that looks almost white when you apply it. The medium inside that is mixed with the gold, it looks white when, you, when it's wet. However, once it dries, it actually becomes a beautiful shiny gold. And I really liked how it looked because of that. So although you see it looking kind of whitish gold, when it dries, you're going to see the beautiful shininess of the gold itself. And I did this on both sides just to add a little bit of that beautiful, shiny, shimmering gold. I heat set the gold really well so I could see that beautiful shininess. And then I took the same gold and I sprayed a couple of leaf swags that are part of the Joggles collection. These are the watercolor art parts. And all I did is just spray them with some gold and then splatter them with a little bit of that turquoise color that I had used at the beginning. The turquoise kind of mixed with the gold and spread and diffused and that made it look really cool. And then I dried it really well. These art parts, watercolor art parts, are made out of watercolor paper 
and they're almost like laser cut chipboard but they're made out of watercolor paper so you can paint them and use them for different things. In this case I wanted to add these leaves onto my art journal and I wasn't sure how I was going to do it but I just painted two of them just in case because I wasn't sure how many I needed. When it came down to it I ended up cutting them and only using the top of the leaf on both sides just to have the movement continue on towards the center. And then I grabbed two acetate words from Heidi Swap, which say enjoy today and just added it to my layout. I took some Prima Finaber soft matte gel again and using my soft silicone brush I just glued the leaves and the words to the background. I tried not to add any gel on top of the leaves because I knew I wanted to outline them with a black marker. I took my black Posca pen and once the gel was dry I went around and I highlighted some of the leaves and created some designs and doodling inside the leaves. You have to make sure that the gel is fully dry. In some places it wasn't fully dry and it can ruin the tip. And it did ruin it a little bit for me, but I tried to be very careful and not go where the gel was. Once I added all the little leaves and the outlines, I was done with the layout. But of course, before putting it back in the journal, I took my gold spray again and started splattering in the background. I wanted to create some golden splatters to tie it all in and match it to the rest of the golden elements. Finally, I took the two pages and I added them back into the journal by clicking it to the disks. It's quite easy to do and it makes it so easy to use these pages because of it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends on social media. For more inspiration, subscribe to my channel and visit me on my website. If you want to receive notifications of when I put a video up, please click on the little bell beside the subscribe button and you will get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much and have an amazing day. Bye!